than 23,000 candidates uh, managed to score above the C+, plus, which means they're probably eligible to enter university, out of 400,000 students. That leaves 300,000 students without the option of public university. What options do they have? Yeah, that, that's a good question. We are seeing a big um, uh, imbalance between 73% that uh, don't have a minimum entry to university and only 27% that are making it. Now, we had the, the, the principal sector in, in charge of science and technology promising that uh, we have middle level colleges for those that uh, did not attain a C+. Mm -hmm. uh, what we know is that, um, of course, we have uh, uh, certain institutions that uh, take uh, these students, but then when you look at uh, the, even the funding, the allocation, we are not expecting that these institutions will absorb the 73 percent. Mm -hmm. So the number that requires alternatives is much bigger than the alternatives provide. We know that most of the middle level colleges, including those for teaching nursing and even the Institute of, of, of Technology all over the country, most of them require a C plane. Mm -hmm. What we see in these um, results is a pyramid that has a very uh, big bottom uh, in, in this way that, that uh, we have a few candidates at the top mm -hmm. and most of them are at the base so we don't know really what will happen mm -hmm. to the majority of students that did not meet the minimum entry to university. Some other startling numbers as well I mean th th only three out of the top ten students are girls you know what exactly is going on there because this is a trend we've also seen at the KCPE level um, which could probably say girls are not performing as good as the boys yeah, that, that, that's true. We seem to be closing the gender gap in terms of enrollment, in terms of numbers, in terms of candidature. But we don't seem to be doing very well in terms of closing the learning gap, especially in secondary school between boys and girls. We are seeing the same as candidates. Also the schools, there are three on, only three girls schools at the top, mm -hmm. uh, ten and seven. Uh, of them and, nan and, and none of the private girls schools. So we, we need to, to look at what happened to the big schools like Loretta Limuru, like Alliance Girls that always were in top 10 and now have kept on drifting further away. We need really to raise this question and how even nationally to cover the gap of learning between boys and girls. Mm -hmm. Now for, for the issue of uh, students who do not answer questions to actually be mentioned by Professor Kaimeni, that means that situation is actually probably worse than we think. What could be going on there? Are they saying, I do not know anything that's on this question paper? Uh, as, as the cabinet secretary tried to explain, I, th I think these are people who, who could have dropped out, or some of them even practically had dropped out. They come, they feel incompetent to even attempt. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why they feel that, that they could get a certificate because the way things are right now. If you just sit and write your name, you'll get a certificate. But then we need to ask ourselves, how come that, that uh, such a thing is happening? Yeah. First is to look at the curriculum. It's, it is possible that the curriculum is way ahead of them and they feel very incompetent to even attempt. So over the four years, these are students who most likely have not learned anything and this is what now they are demonstrating. So we need to focus on learning so that every student entering Form 1 at the end of the four years, they are able to come up with outcomes that can actually lead them to lifelong learning, but also be a ticket mm -hmm. to other opportunities that life uh, prefers. Talking of outcomes, English is one of the subjects that really you know, suffered this time round. And um, the Ministry of Education blamed it on the digital era. Uh, some people call it the SASA generation, where you write XA, XA as SASA instead of SA, SA. And you know, it is negatively impacting the language and the, you know, the speaking, um, you know, the English language, which is our official language in the country. What is going on there and what can be done to harness uh, you know, what has been a very beautiful language for all these years for this country? Yeah, uh, of course, um, there are many other uh, languages declining, uh, subjects de declining, but English is highlighted today. Now, I wouldn't agree that uh, technology is responsible, because if technology were responsible, then we'd see the same in Kiswahili. Actually, Kiswahili ought to be affected more by Sheng, as, as the cabinet sector was saying, than English. So we need to look at the pedagogy, 
the science of teaching and delivering English within the changing times. So I think it is a call to schools and especially English teachers to review and see what new thing do they need to bring in the teaching methodology of this language against the context that are ever changing. Let's stay with language for a little bit and um, an interesting thing I picked out, early development, preschool, low primary um, statement came out that the medium of instruction shall be in the predominant language that's spoken in the area. First of all, what does that mean? Because I know when we were growing up around about that time, say if you went to school in Central, in uh, your kindergarten, nursery school, standard one to up to three, you'd be taught in Kikuyu. Yeah, is, uh, that, is that what? Uh, yes, uh, the policy as the cabinet secretary tried to explain is, as, uh, is, is in what is called uh, Gashadi report of 1976, this commission that was formed. And one of the issues identified, and which, is, which, which still stands, was that uh, when children come, to uh, class one, our standard one. The best language to teach, introduce knowledge, introduce the school culture to them, understanding of what needs to be understood at that time, which are the foundations of learning. Mm -hmm. It ought to be in a language that a child already speaks when they come to school. So the, the, the question of which language, what determines is which language is this child speaking. Now, uh, I heard somebody commenting that, that, uh, that is a policy of the 70s. If that were a policy of the 70s, then we ought to have abolished our languages by now so that we only speak English. Mm -hmm. This is still as relevant, if not more, as it were. Because uh, introducing a, a child to learning, when you try to introduce new knowledge and at the same time a new language, then the child gets uh, confused and that's how we, we form uh, um, a, a wobbly foundation. So introducing reading ought to be in a language that a child already speaks, then build up systematically, and there are methods to do that, to now English and Kiswahili or whichever other language as a second language. Mm -hmm. so, so that firm foundation, especially focusing on what a child does between standard one and standard three, is emerging as very critical for event performance in mm. the eventual years. Very quickly before I hand over to Mwakazi, a statement that no child should be made to repeat despite their performance. You know, as an expert in education, does repeating help at all in the performance of a child's education? Repeating helps but a very small population. Repeating is, uh, is actually uh, not an option because when a child repeats, it means they use more resources to cover. When a child repeat, re repeats, it means their time uh, is taken up by a curriculum. What ought to happen is to create changes in both the curriculum and its implementation so that every child covers what they are supposed to cover in the curriculum level before they move to the next level. Mm -hmm. But what we have been seeing is a lot of gap in learning that as up to 70% of learners moving from one grade to another through the primary school and secondary school, and that's what the results are showing us, they move without having covered the curriculum expectations of that grade. Mm -hmm. So repeating grade is not um, a solution. However, Rather than just abolishing it, we need to look at it holistically. We need to look to understand that parents are desperate, that this examination determines the fate of a person. So when I've gotten a C minus and I know that uh, my road is blocked, I have no more pathway to, to, uh, to success, then I ought to be given an alternative. If it's not repeating, then I should be able to bridge the one or two subjects that I performed very poorly mm -hmm. to improve my, my, my mean score. So these are the alternatives that the cabinet secretary ought to offer to the, especially the very, very many candidates who did not manage to get even a seat playing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Mugo, for, for your insights this afternoon. Uh, John Mugo, Dr. John Mugo, the country director of Uwezo Kenya, giving us some insights on some of the glaring differences between uh, some of the top performers and the rest of, of the students in the KCSE results of 2013. I'll now hand you over back to Johnston Mwakazi for more on Citizen Live at One. Many thanks indeed, Terry and Chabet, for that. Now, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, of course, we'll be giving you more, much more, and uh, including Lupita Nyong'o, who's making headlines in the international field. So don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs>